One of the biggest problem areas in trumpet playing has to be the issue of overblowing. And I knew I needed to make a video of this because trust me when I say this, I am an expert on this subject, unfortunately. In this video, we're gonna define overblowing. We're gonna talk about a lot of the negative consequences. And then I'm gonna offer you some tips, some practical steps that I took in my own playing that have really helped me to overcome this hurdle. Let's get right to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Jazz Mind. My name is Tito, and I just wanna say it feels good to be back making videos again. You may have been wondering, hey, how come Tito hasn't uploaded a video in a while? And to be honest with you, I've gone through a kind of a rough stretch over the last month or so. I lost my mother-in-law. And to be honest, the past month has really been kind of tough on me. There was no margin to make videos. For those of you who have reached out, I really appreciate you doing that. My wife and I are doing much better, and I'm really looking forward to getting back on this YouTube train. I wanna thank you so much. Since I've been away, my channel's like blown up twice as much. It's, it's incredible. I wasn't even able to come on here and say thank you for a thousand subs, and now we're at 2,000, just like that. And uh, it really means a lot. It means that the content that I'm putting out is resonating with people. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget that my album, Urban Essence, is out now on all streaming platforms. Please go check it out. Drive up those streams. I would love for you to listen to the music. Let's get into the reason why you're here. And we're going to talk first about what exactly is overblowing. When I use that term, what does that mean? Simply put, overblowing is when we use more energy, more air than we actually need to achieve the musical result that we're going for. And I would add to that, oftentimes we're not able to achieve the musical goal we're going for for the precise reason that we're overblowing. One of the most talked about aspects of trumpet playing is air and the use of air. And do we need air to play the trumpet? Of course we need air. But when we examine the basic gear, I mean, look at the part that we're blowing into, the mouthpiece. Sorry, mine's a little dingy there. It's time for a little cleaning. I mean, how much air can actually fit in this cup and in going through that throat, for example? And so it's important to realize that if you play the trumpet, you're not going to use as much air, you're not gonna need as much air as a trombonist, for example, and especially not as much as a tuba player. But there are a lot of reasons that we fall into the negative habit of overblowing. Let's go through some of those right now. And these reasons are in no particular order. The first reason has to do with your musical identity and persona on the trumpet. It's so easy to listen to outstanding players like Doc Severinsen and Maynard Ferguson, for example. I mean, who hasn't thought I would love to sound like that? But we often move forward in our own trumpet playing, trying to produce that same type of sound as close as we can, not realizing the level of efficiency that those players are able to play with. Think about it. Maynard Ferguson had to be Maynard every single night. And so did Doc and Wayne and John Faddis. To play on the highest level like them requires an incredible amount of consistency. Therefore, there must be a level of efficiency in order to do that. But we can't go in to trumpet playing the way uh, an American football player would go in to a game. You know, there's a, there's a common saying in American football that you leave it all out on the field. We don't want to leave it all out on stage on the trumpet because more than likely you're going to need that tomorrow and you left it all out on stage tonight. We need to learn how to play with proper technique and an efficient approach to the instrument that will allow us to achieve the musical sound and dynamics that, and of course, range and stamina that we need, but that we could also do it the next day as well. The second reason I outlined 
is related to nerves slash adrenaline. And boy, did I fall into this pattern for years. Uh, not so much because I felt a lot of nerves, although there were certain gigs that I played that I considered a little bit more high pressure situations, high leverage situations. And, and yeah, so I might've experienced some nerves there, but for me, most of the time, it's just getting super amped up to play. I love to play. And when you get really excited to play, sometimes your emotions can kind of get the best of you and you don't realize how loud you're playing and then you find yourself wondering, wait a minute, why am I getting so tired so much more quickly? You know, I just played through all of this music. I've been shutting it. I've been practicing it really hard. And you just find yourself going down this vicious cycle of overblowing. Regardless if it's related to just nervous energy or having a lot of adrenaline, either of these reasons can lead us down this bad path of overdoing it, trying to do too much on the trumpet and really getting outside of ourselves because we're not playing like that in the practice room. And yet here we are at the performance trying to do too much. Often related to that is the third reason, and that is tired lips. And this is usually the vicious cycle when we start out just blowing too hard, playing louder than we need to play. All of a sudden we, we start getting super tired in our chops and our lips begin to falter and not respond the way we want them to. And so guess what we try to do? In order to make it happen, we gotta blow harder. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, me too, unfortunately. We're definitely gonna talk about tips to help you improve this, but a huge tip is just not putting yourself in this position in the first place. Another very common reason we tend to overblow is that we naturally play with a mouth environment that's too open. Now, if you're confused about what I just said, I talk a lot about this in my last video called Upper Register Breakthrough. And if you wanna go directly to the uh, chapter on it, you wanna go to the video called Tongue Position and High Notes. And I'll link that video in the description or right here or something. In that video, I talk a lot about the importance of creating the proper mouth environment for the note that you're on. And I just wanna say this, one of the more common misconceptions is that in order to get a beautiful, nice open tone, that our mouth has to be way open or as open as it possibly can. I used to fall into that type of thinking. And I also used to fall into a ton of issues with lack of efficiency and overblowing. My friends, resistance is not the enemy. Everybody needs a certain level of resistance when playing the trumpet. The mouthpiece provides a certain level of resistance. The instrument itself provides a certain level of resistance. And sure, you want to feel comfortable. There are some of you trumpet players out there who really like to move a lot of air, for example. And so you may find yourself playing wider equipment or equipment that's more open, throat open, mouthpiece cup is big, that type of thing. And guess what? If you're not having any endurance issues and you're able to get through the gig on a consistent basis, God bless you, more power to you. But each of us must examine our own approach to the instrument and more importantly, what kind of results we're getting at the live performances themselves with our current approach to the trumpet. And if you're consistently finding yourself sounding really good for the first five or 10 minutes or so, but as the gig progresses, you notice the quality of your playing keeps going down and down and down and down, then this is probably a clear sign that you're not being as efficient as you could be. And what I've learned about myself is that a huge part of developing my efficiency is learning how to play with a smaller inner mouth and not being afraid to do that, thinking that that would somehow equate to getting a very small and tiny sound. And hopefully you've heard me enough by now. And if you haven't, Urban Essence, my latest album is out right now on all streaming platforms. I strive to get a beautiful, even tone in all registers. That's my 
makeup. That's my musical identity and persona. And the last reason I want to share with you that as a reason that we overblow is we just simply can't hear ourselves well enough. I talk about this in my video entitled Five Not So Obvious Reasons That Are Limiting Your Endurance. This reality really dawned on me as a young professional in Chicago when I would have gigs that would go so well. In fact, I felt at the end of the gig, I could probably play another set of music. And then the very next day, I would struggle to make it through the gig, and I knew it wasn't my best effort. And I just couldn't put two and two together until I realized that the gigs where I could hear myself very, very well were usually the gigs that went very smoothly. But the gigs that I would show up to that didn't have a microphone, or sometimes I'd play these salsa gigs at two in the morning and the monitor would be like literally right here by my ear. And I just kept hearing, you know, cowbell causing me throbbing headaches. Those are the times when I would struggle. So now I wanna share with you some tips that have really helped me overcome this problem. I'm not gonna say I've completely overcome this problem. I still find myself on occasion pushing harder than I need to for the reasons aforementioned, for example. This isn't a perfect science here, but I can say I've made incredible strides in my career and I've become a much, much more consistent player as a result of these tips that I'm about to share with you. The first tip, we need to learn what playing efficiently with volume actually means. I want you to keep in mind that when I use the word efficiency, that in no way signifies that you're going to be less dynamic of a performer or that I'm just going to play mezzo forte the whole time and not really open up. No, 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 no. But there is a proper way to play forte and fortissimo and beyond that we must learn. Regardless of what dynamic level you play, the sound must always be pure, beautiful, and tension-free. Let me repeat that. The sound must be pure, beautiful, and tension-free. There shouldn't be tension in your sound. Your favorite players, even if they're crazy lead player high note types, they're not playing with tension in the sound. For this important lesson, I've always used this analogy. When, whenever we're playing a note on the trumpet, I want you to imagine that as you hold any note on the trumpet, that a small bubble is being formed here. You know, we used to blow bubbles as kids, for example. Well, imagine that there's just this small, delicate bubble. And, and obviously, if we're playing soft, it's a smaller bubble. But if we're playing really loud, that bubble starts expanding and gets really, really big. But here's the key. It's fragile. And so we never want to burst the bubble, even if we're playing at a strong dynamic, forte, fortissimo, or even louder. And what are the musical signs that we are, we are officially overblowing now? Well, take a listen to this. Sorry, I know that that was kind of a gnarly sound. What made it gnarly, though? What were the characteristics? Well, first of all, you heard the sound get very harsh, abrasive, and I would say cold. It's not the kind of sound that you'd want to listen to. And if you were in the front row at one of my performances and I played a note like that, you'd probably need to cover your ears or you'd turn away or something. Family, our sound should never cause people to want to cover their ears when we're playing. Even if you naturally have a very bright sound on the trumpet, it should be a beautiful, warm, bright sound. I think of the great Louis Armstrong, for example. He had a beautiful, bright sound, but there was never any tension in that sound. It was warm. It was beautiful. And so how do we go about working on this? I've got a very simple exercise for you, and that is playing long tones, starting at a very soft dynamic level, and crescendoing to your max level, 
Now I'm gonna try this specific exercise. I'm gonna start very soft and I'm gonna crescendo, but I'm gonna try and keep that bubble expanding, but never bursting the bubble. I'm gonna play as loud as I can with a beautiful tension-free sound. And then I'm going to decrescendo back to soft again. Let's try that right now on a middle C. And you'll want to do this exercise in all registers. So let's try a low note now. Let's try a low A. Now I'm going to try a G on top of the staff. That was the first note that started approaching my upper register, and there were some unique differences as we start to get up higher and trying to play high and loud at the same time. Number one was there was no way I could move the quantity of air that I was moving on that previous low A on the G on top of the staff. Absolutely no way. When you're down in the low register like that, your aperture is literally at its most open setting. So there's plenty of room down there to move quite a bit of air. That is not the case as we start to get into the upper register. And unfortunately, it is quite easy to burst that bubble, to go past that breaking point, as it were, where the sound begins to get tense and you start to blow it out of tune whether it be sharp or flat. I know when I fly open and I'm overblowing, my pitch center usually goes down because my mouth is opening up. So for me to go from pianissimo to fortissimo on the G on top of the staff, I added probably half the air that I added for the low A. But guess what? To your audience, it's not going to sound like that because those high notes carry quite a bit of power when you're playing with a centered tone and when you're playing with a sound that still carries the overtones in the sound. What we forget is that when we start muscling notes and start overblowing, we're actually killing those beautiful overtones in the sound. The overtones are what's gonna actually allow your sound to project all the way to the back of the concert hall and you'll be able to do so using less energy than you think. I'm gonna do one more long tone. I'm gonna to go up to high D now, and I can guarantee you that because my mouth environment is so small, my, my tongue level is elevated, my jaw is elevated, my airstream is very, very small, almost like a laser beam. But you're gonna hear me play with a beautiful open tone, and I'm going to step on the gas to get to fortissimo only a little bit. In the high register, I never find myself flooring it. I never am just emptying my lungs th through the instrument. I'm not going to do it. No, it's too easy to overblow in the upper register. And the reality is you don't need it to achieve a beautiful tension-free fortissimo. So please practice playing that exercise 
in all registers. And of course, make sure you're using proper technique in that upper register. I go in detail through my technical approach to playing in the upper register, once again on my last video, Upper Register Breakthrough. So please check that out. Don't want anybody to hurt themselves here. I'm gonna run through some other tips that have really helped me. The next tip is directly related to what I just shared with you, and it's this. Do not be afraid of playing with a smaller inner mouth as you ascend into the upper register. Once again, I used to think that lifting my tongue too high or bringing my teeth closer together as I ascended into the upper register was naturally going to lead to a small and pinched sound. And what I've learned is that the opposite is actually true. One of the most common reasons that the lips pinch is because the mouth environment is actually too big for that level of high note that you're trying to play. And when it's too open, when your tongue is too low, when your teeth are too far apart and you're trying to play that high C or that high D or whatever, then your lips are like, well, we're not gonna make it, so we gotta help, we gotta do something. And that's when your lips start to try and squeeze. So if you are struggling with a pinched, sharp type of sound as you go into the upper register, you're the ones that I want you to think more about getting your tongue higher, getting your jaw higher, and making your inner mouth even smaller. Why? so that your lips don't have to do anything but vibrate. Leave your lips out of it. Your lips have one job. They got one job. You had one job. And that is to vibrate. I'm gonna say it, you're gonna hear me say it on this channel over and over and over again. A small mouth does not equate to a small tone in the upper register. It is quite the contrary. The smaller your mouth gets in the upper register, the less your lips have to change or manipulate, the bigger, more robust and rounder the sound gets up high. The trumpet is a mind job. Next up, be prepared before any gig or concert with earplugs. Now, if you go get cheap earplugs at your local pharmacy or something, you know, those actually block out quite a bit of, of sound. If you have the, the means to afford prescription earplugs, those are the best case scenario because they only block out a certain decibel level. So you would still be able to hear the rest of the ensemble relatively well, it's just gonna bring down those decibels to a healthier level for your ears. Not only does it do that though, when you are wearing earplugs, you can hear your own inner vibration while you're playing, the vibration that's occurring inside your body. And so it's much easier to hear yourself. In one of my other videos, I talk about, I, I often will play with just one earplug so that I'll have another one ready to hear the band. But oftentimes I have been on bands that are just way too loud. And I can't be expected to compete with electric guitar and electric bass and amplified keyboards and drums. And here I am just using my lips to play this instrument. And you shouldn't expect yourself to be able to compete with that either. There is only so much we can do. And hopefully you have a good sound technician that is keeping the levels right so that the trumpet can be heard so that we don't have to compete against amplified instruments. And I would say most of the time, that is the case, not all the time, but most of the time, the sound person is on their job and everybody can hear the trumpet. But that doesn't mean that I can hear myself. So that's why I need at least one earplug or two earplugs if the band is loud enough. And I have been on situations where I've literally put in two and that was just me protecting my hearing and protecting me against myself from overblowing. Next tip, choose the most efficient equipment for you. Whenever I'm choosing a mouthpiece or an instrument, I am interested in two things, and these two things are equally important to me. I want a beautiful sound, whatever that means to you, because all of us hear our sounds 
a bit differently, don't we? These, vi these videos are going out to all different types of trumpet players in every genre and some non-trumpet players. Shout out to you non-trumpet players that are, that are tuning into my videos. Thank you so much. I want it to sound great to my ears, but I also need it to feel easy to play. I'm looking for ease of play. I'm searching for it. Remember that your sound in large part is up here, right? You have a vision for what you want to sound like. And if I were to give you a mouthpiece that you found, wow, that's really easy for me to play. I barely have to blow any air into it and I'm getting something. Like right there, I feel like I'm barely doing anything. I'm just using the air in my mouth and immediately my lips are engaging in that beautiful sympathetic vibration. That doesn't happen on every mouthpiece. Some mouthpieces are too big. Other mouthpieces are too small. Sometimes the cup depth is not right. Sometimes the rim diameter doesn't feel comfortable. No, I'm going to choose something that is easy for me to play because I know that primarily my sound is up here. And if I were to play that mouthpiece for a month, I'm going to start stepping into my sound. I'm going to start finding my sound on that mouthpiece. And then, of course, when I want to change the color of my sound, if I got a more of a lead type of, of gig that I need to play, Okay, I've got a different mouthpiece for that, but the principle remains the same. It's got to feel comfortable on my face, and it's got to be something that I don't have to work crazy hard in order to get the mouthpiece to speak. That doesn't make any sense. I don't want to wait for the stars to align for me to make this mouthpiece work. No, I want, the, I want my gear to come to me and come to my lip structure and my teeth structure. And, and you know, I'm saying this, I'm not really a gearhead, to be honest with you. Right now, I'm literally playing a off-the-shelf Bach 3D mouthpiece. That's what I play. That feels really comfortable to my face. I know gear is something you can go down a serious rabbit hole in, and especially with all of the great mouthpiece and trumpet custom designers and makers out there right now. I mean, the, the options and combinations are literally endless. But for some of you out there, you've been chasing sound more than anything and not really giving enough attention to the ease of play. And I would love for you to go through your old shoebox of mouthpieces and just try some really soft, easy, simple exercises, both tongued and slurred. Uh, get into your low register, get into your upper register and really tell yourself which mouthpiece actually gives me more while I'm expending less energy. That's the gear that I'm interested in. And the last tip is a simple one. When you're performing live, it's important that you commit to playing by feel. What does that mean to play by feel? That means to play to the way that you normally play on a day-to-day -day basis. It's super easy to just get out of our normal way of approaching the instrument when we're under a stressful situation or when we're super amped up to play and we got the adrenaline flowing or maybe you're playing like a jury for your professors and you're freaking out, whatever the case may be, be well attuned to the feel of when you're playing in an easy and free manner and strive for that when you're at the performance. People ask me all the time, what are you thinking when you play? And honestly, this is a big part of what I'm thinking when I play. Because I know that if I'm comfortable, if I'm playing dynamics in the proper way, if I'm not bursting that bubble, and also if I'm not like moving around too much, or then I feel good about my chances for making my best music. I think a lot of times when we get nervous or maybe perhaps you, did, you didn't prepare the music as well as you needed to prepare it. And so your mind is really focused on trying to play it technically, correctly, and accurately. We can easily lose sight of what it's feeling like to play and, and not realize how much harder you're working to get the music to come out. Play by feel. Memorize the feel of playing efficiently with volume and commit to that feel. And if you still can't hear yourself that well, trust in your projection. Trust in the fact that if you're playing with a centered tone with those beautiful overtones in the sound, 
that that sound is going to carry and you're going to project very well. I hope you found something of value in this video. Let me know if you've struggled with overblowing and if so, how have you gone about addressing it? I would love to hear that in the comments. All right, everybody, let's go and work this stuff out. I wish you all the best. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel so that you're aware of all of my videos that I'm about to drop. And don't forget to check out my newest album, Urban Essence. I'm really proud of it and excited for the music, and I want to share it with all of you. I'll see you all in the next video, everybody. Peace.